this is a very interesting space. So recent data sets, um, especially out of the Nordic MCL2, MCL3 studies, would suggest that TB53 mutated mantle cell lymphoma is a particularly adverse disease subgroup with a median progression-free survival less than one year and a median overall survival not, not much longer than just one year um, when treated with conventional chemoimmunotherapy-based strategies. And so there's clearly a huge room for improvement in the management of TB53 mutated mantle cell lymphoma. One moral that I think, it, well, or one key message out of the data sets that I think is fairly compelling is that autologous stem cell transplantation in first response for this subset is unlikely to improve outcomes for these patients, as many of them will progress either prior to their autograft or shortly after undergoing autologous stem cell transplantation. So I think that autologous stem cell transplantation is probably adding treatment-related toxicity and morbidity uh, and potentially compromising subsequent th therapy, but not adding a lot to patients with TB53 mutated disease. But it leaves an open-ended question, well, what should we do for these patients? Um, especially given that even with BTKI-based salvage in the second line, outcomes are also quite poor. The work that we've done here, we've done at the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre in Royal Melbourne is looking at the role of allogeneic stem cell transplant. And in admittedly a small cohort of patients, uh, 13 with confirmed TB53 mutations, we looked at how well can allogeneic stem cell transplantation perform, particularly when used in first response um, uh, after first line therapy. And what we found was that 50 to 60% of patients can have durable remissions and probable cures uh, remaining in remission four years beyond there, with a median follow-up of four years beyond their transplant. So allogeneic stem cell transplantation has been known to be curative in mantle cell lymphoma broadly, um, but this data set confirms that it can be an effective curative strategy in the TP53 mutated subset, and perhaps should be considered earlier for these patients for whom conventional therapies are less effective. Of course, the big open question uh, still is, well, what's better? Should you go to allogeneic stem cell transplantation in first response, or should you aim to go to CAR T cell in second or third line? And I think that's gonna remain a complex question for some time. However, data from the Zuma 2 study would suggest that um, the curative potential for CAR-T, at least in relapsed and refractory mantle cell lymphoma, is not that clear. And there, is a, there does appear to be a progressive rate of relapse even beyond the four year mark. And the representation of TB53 mutated disease in that, in that study is relatively small. And there's been some recent real world data to suggest that patients with TB53 aberrant disease do less well when treated with CAR-T cells in the real world. So, CAR-T is attractive because it's less toxic and the risk of graft versus host disease is less, but the curative potential is less clear. Allogeneic stem cell transplantation has a strong track record of cure, and our recent data would suggest that that's true for patients with TP53 mutated disease, but of course, it's a significantly more toxic therapy. I think the only other comment I would make is that for patients with newly diagnosed mantle cell lymphoma, we think that it's essential that they be tested for TB53 mutations because that's, this is a very powerful prognostic, prognostic marker that appears to outperform other conventional markers of disease risk. Um, and we think that it probably should change management in that autologous stem cell transplantation should not be pursued in first CR and patients should be aiming for allogeneic stem cell transplant in first response or early use of CAR T cells.